So the other side, we got to put a point on here. And uh, the kinds of points that I like uh, on, on my darts are made out of copper. And of course, this is a triangle, and I want to make a cone that fits this. And this isn't a cone yet, but I'm going to I'm going to create a cone shape out of this by uh, by taking away some slivers of material here and pinching it in and wrapping it with fiber. And then when I glue the cone on there, it all becomes very solid and hard. Anyway, I'll show you how to make the cone shape dart point. This I'm sure you've never done before. pliers water this is starting to look like alchemy isn't it a really nice cone shaped dart um, has has uh, tapered edges and to get these tapered you basically have to uh, hammer them down and uh, I do it like this As you hammer copper, it gets harder. And there's only so far that you can hammer it down until you just, it just won't get any thinner. It just it's becomes stubborn. Let me, let me just show you the, what's happening here. See how <clears throat> thick this one mm -hmm. is? It's already half as thin, but it has to be like <clears throat> down to paper thin on the edge. You have to be particularly careful at the point. If you hammer on one side too much, it'll bend the point into a hook. Keep that from happening. The Indians in the Keweenaw Peninsula made dart points like this for thousands of years. Darts made with these copper points like this are, are considered primitive because the Indians could have or did in fact make them like this. So when you shoot in the international standard accuracy contest, a lot of people like to stay in the primitive, on the primitive side of the whole thing. Yeah. So I, I grab it by the very corner like that. This is a, called a kneeling. And you want to get it to a dull red. In this bright sunlight, you can't see it yet, but it is actually dull red here. You, you know you got it hot enough when it does that. You see that yeah. color yep. change? Then you quench it suddenly, and it cleans it off, and it cools down. And lo and behold, it's very soft. And now you can hammer it again. See how e much easier oh, yeah. it hammers? If you didn't know that, you couldn't do this as well. Pretty important little part of the whole process. What, what I did is I looked at um, a bunch of these things from somebody's collection. I have a friend that collected many of these uh, copper points from the old copper culture of Michigan. and. Lake Superior in that area, and uh, I, I noticed how almost every one of the po copper points had nice tapered edges, and you'll see as I go forward with this how how it kind of is important to do this. See how much thinner that is now? Yeah. And I like the back taper too, so that you don't have this edge that catches on the on the target surface or the skin of the deer that you shoot. You know. How many times can you heat up the copper like that? Thousands, if you wanted to. You can you can't over anneal it. I don't think the only thing you could do possibly is heat it to the point where it melts. That's difficult to do with a normal propane torch like this. It just 
there's too much surface area in it. It cools down very quickly. You can see it's hot enough now. And one more time. This is three times that I've annealed it so far. I actually annealed it before I started, but I, I didn't do that here. All these in this little leather bucket is, are, are annealed from when I made them the first time, when I made the blanks. So I'm going to anneal it one more time. And then we'll start rolling it into the cone. Okay, so I put that there like that. You have to have something kind of round like a mandrel. You want to crease it nicely. Nice crease here always makes the rest of the job go much easier. Get it nice and even so you're not going off one side or the other. And working the tip is a, is a little tricky. You wanna use little hits and then go, go from one side to the other and fold it in. So, so you suggest always starting at the tip. Yeah, you, you wanna get the tip nice and even so that it, the tip is not rolled up in a spiral. The spiral doesn't seem to hold up as long as, as, as this method here. And you want to make sure that one side folds under the other, not, you don't want to change halfway across the, the dart. And what's happening is that the copper is getting real hard now. And it, it, it's actually bouncing back. It gets kind of springy. And that's the secret to the strength of this kind of thing, is the, the hardening of the copper. See how I'm trying to get that one yeah, edge yeah. over the other? This, this is again one of those things that requires a little skill, but it's not difficult to learn this. This is easier to do, I think, than flint napping. And you end up with a product, a final product that's really, really satisfying. And it's going to break if you hit a rock with it. or Yeah, even if you hit a rock with it, it bends over, you can straighten it out. If you could make it, you can fix it, you know. You can bend them over dozens of times without breaking them and if you bend them over and you want to you can take them off anneal it and then straighten it and it'll last even longer you know but I, i've straightened them in the field and done it several times and uh here's the part where you get the real pointy point get it near the edge and give it a nice little finishing touch See how pointy that is? That is pointy. So this is going to fit on here. And this isn't shaped like this, but we're going to make it that way, you know? And uh, so the next step, Charlie, is to uh, work this point down so that it will bend into the middle of that thing there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three cuts on the outside and remove kind of a V-shape 
of material and then bend it together and then when the glue goes in there it'll it'll uh, create a, a nice joint so you're going to cut a relief cut in the yeah bamboo so that it can compress down with the yeah I'm going to go a little deeper. A lot of people will read about atlatls on the internet and they think, you know, you got to have a four shaft and that's totally insane. That's a lot of work compared to what I'm going to show you and it's totally unnecessary, you know. The only reason that you need a four shaft is to make the, the tip end of the dart heavier. And sometimes you can just add a piece of wire in here you can put a, you can get a small uh, but long drill and like an eighth inch drill and drill through these nodes here. You can put a piece of wire up through here, a piece of coat hanger wire or I don't know. Sometimes I use uh, tungsten welding rods. They're very heavy. They're expensive but they, they work really nicely. I don't think this is going to be weighted, this dart is going to be weighted forward enough. See how I've carved a triangle here? You see how that, that will pinch in now? Yeah. Yep. That leaves a, enough really strong material that goes down inside of here. To make this really strong, we're going to tap this down and make it a little tighter around here before we glue it on. And that'll make a really nice point. I'm trying to fold it under that flap there. It takes a while to get this done nicely. Patience. So this really makes a custom fit around the, the dart end, you know. I'm tilting the hammer back now to get that down and then stop in a second and add the glue in. This is a ferrule tight. You could use the, the pine rosin glue at this time, point if you wanted to make it you know totally primitive but this stuff works better. Uh, actually the pine rosin glue works just fine but it's uh but when you use a pine rosin glue you have to drill a hole in this and put a nail in it to keep the point from sliding off which is a you know a concern so before I glue this let's see where the balance point is yeah I, I wanted it more over here so I might add a little bit of um, fiber around here and thread you know make some more of that stuff down here you know but for this for at this point I'm just gonna glue it on and see how it comes out I put a lot of glue on underneath the underneath these copper points because I want to complete the entire inside of that copper point to be filled with glue. Now, I'm going to heat this up with the pliers. You don't want to heat this up hot enough to 
to get it to change much color because it's hard. Remember we hardened? It got hard by hammering. But that hot is enough. And I jammed that on there tight. And uh, I'm going to wet my hands and kind of tool that in. See how the glue is squeezed out of that joint there? If you cool it in water at this point, it, it literally sucks the point on with vacuum. I'm going to heat this a little bit. I'm going to straighten it right now. It's pointing not straight to the front of the dart. I don't know why. I'll figure it out and get it squared up here. That's pretty good. I always like to file the back corners of this off, the back edges. So that it pulls out easily out of your target. And if you're going to hunt with this, when you hunt, you want to do a three corner tip grinding like that, so it's that sharp. That'll oh, go yeah. right through. That'll go right through a deer. Of course, if I were hunting, I probably would make. I would use the stainless steel version of this. How, Same, much, how much harder is that to work than the copper? It's a lot harder. It's more difficult to work the steel. Do you work it the same way as exactly. far as annealing it? No. You don't, it's, it's already as soft as it's going to get and as hard as it's going to get the way, that, the way it's born. And uh, you just have to hammer it until it's the right shape. and and uh, be done with it. But it makes a really good fishing point. This uh, copper point right here, this style of point is a beautiful fishing point. You have to make uh, some uh, barbs out of something and uh, put them on there to keep the fish on. Piece of wire. Or, uh, I suppose you could hammer out another piece of co copper and make them or bone or something you know make some pointy things I think that's on there real well just imagine somebody 7,000 years ago in in the Keweenaw Peninsula brandishing points that look like that on their atlatls huh it's probably a very high status thing Okay, so that is done except for fletching. Fletching is on another video, so um, I'm going to skip that. And now we're going to make an atlatl out of a out of a palmetto branch, and you're in charge of that. Sounds you can tell good. me how you're going to do that. How's that sound? We're having a good day here in in uh, Ocala National Park. We're uh, at a camp called Camp Kiwanis. My name is Bob Berg and this is Charlie Bracken. Uh, thanks for watching our video. You can see us at www.thunderbirdatlatl.com and also flintnappingtools.com. Thank you for watching.